Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm on the workbench with a client system and I wanted to cover some general questions that I've been getting asked quite frequently and that is, how do I actually go about organizing my bills? And when I talk about organizing my bills, how do I organize and segregate certain sections of the bill to make it less daunting? If you're a novice, if you're advanced, one of the things I found that works best, at least for me, is I allocate days and hours to a certain section. So if I'm working on you know, IEC power and I'm working on the auxiliary power input, I'd be focusing on that in general. Um, I also then focus on, this is a master edition enclosure, and you can see that by we've got uh, one of the GX16 ports here, another one here. This client particularly wanted all four inputs wired along with a single relay. So you can see all those wirings have been done, and now uh, we've got right here our inputs already wired. You can see the leads of the silicone leads are already set, and we've got our leads coming in here. They come around. They go through, of course, a ferrite. This is a TDK, uh, excuse me, a TDK ferrite, and they come up, they come around, and everything gets mounted right into the drive. Now, one of the best things about this is, of course, I don't have IEC power yet mounted, but you can see I've already allocated the support sticker so that this client ever services his unit, he knows exactly what connection goes where. We can see input one, input two, input three, input four, and just following the diagram. He also has that same diagram on top. This makes servicing your system 10 times faster. The other thing is, you'll notice, uh, I've already got this mounted, uh, the ferrite with double-sided tape. I do that for serviceability. If the client has to work on the system, he can just snap this off, snap it back on, he's set to go. The other thing is, is that these leads, you'll notice, are very short. Even though they come up and around, it's still very clean and very short. Uh, again, the G540 is outputting signals from uh, those inputs and that's why all leads are red because red symbolizes what? We're putting out a voltage, okay? The other ends of these you can see are already uh, tagged on as far as being tacked in place and these will go to the power supply which are the blue and then of course the green go to our shield drains. And again, shield drains are gonna be allocated to the ground bus in the chassis and these will be cut custom to length as required. So that's how we keep our system as clean as possible. You don't see that done. Most guys, what they do is they cut everything long, leave it, and then they go back and, you know, they'll rewire their system. I've gotten many questions on that. Do I wire something first? And then I do I go back and rewire it? No, I don't do that. I take my time and I allocate what a specific client wants. Because you have to remember, I'm building custom systems. When I say custom, I might have one or two clients that buy a general uh system where it's just wired in just basic format, a lot of my clients want the master edition version and they'll ask for different configurations. Well, I want two inputs for this, I want an input for that, I only want one relay, I want tandem relays. All of that requires custom engineering for their specific application. So again, this is the only way to do this in a neat format. This is why it's so costly, is that if everybody was just generally going through and you know wiring everything just at once well that's like buying a radio from the store and just plug it in your car and the harness kind of plugs in it's not that way everything is hand built everything is soldered everything goes in and again seeing everything break down then you can allocate all of the time to get this the way it should be and again when i say that again we have four inputs here just looking at these gx16s each one of these have three leads and a lot of guys go well that's not a big deal and it's like, okay, but 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and then if he wanted this one, in this case he doesn't, but right now we're at 15 leads right there, and we still have bare ends on this end. So now double, now go through the workload, and you see just how much breaks down, and that's why I said segregating all of your work makes things much easier, much more symmetrical, and allows you to focus on one general area, and you're set. You'll also notice now I don't have... I'm actually building this inside the enclosure's half where the drive is mounted. I'm not putting too much stuff in my way. I can focus on one area, keep it clean, move on to the next. And you'll learn that as you work. The whole idea of electronics is working, I feel, in a symmetrical format where cleanliness is everything. Because cleanliness means that it's serviceable. If it's not clean, it's really not serviceable. You will not be able to go through and say, well, you know, what is what? The beauty of the way we've got everything set here with the graphic, everything ties in. 
And that's exactly the way I would want it done and I would expect many of you to want it done. So again, client comes in here, he says, man, I don't know what I've got. Oh, okay, I've got everything right here. I can come over here. Well, naturally we see input one is right here. That's input one, then input two and so on and so forth. Um, it's really that simple. I mean, there's really not a lot of complexity here and that's the way everything with these type of electronics I feel should be. However, you pay for that. You know, all of this detail is what you're going to pay for. But in the long run, if you ever do have to service the system, which over time is inevitable, you're going to find this is the easiest way. So my novice guys out there who are just building a system, hopefully you picked up something from this and just attempt to do it. When I say attempt to do it, um, the best thing to do, and I even do this myself, I mean, and I've built now hundreds if not thousands of systems, um, I find that a perfect hour, I call it the perfect hour, and the perfect hour to me is where I work in symmetry for one hour solid perfectly to where everything is the way it should be at the best of my ability and then I walk away. Okay, these people that are used to working eight hour shifts, what they forget is how many perfect hours are in an eight hour shift? Most attention spans, I mean even if we look at YouTube, most attention spans are like 30 seconds. So. To really do the best work you can do is going to take time. And that's why the best factories, Ferrari, Lamborghini, uh, 3M, all of these factories practice that ability to where they would rather have a robot with a perfect hour. We're not robots, so I try to allocate a perfect hour. Do I always get it? No, I don't. I'm human. But that's what I shoot for. And the, the more we work towards that perfect hour in whatever area we're building, you're going to see it adds up real quick. You become faster because you're not as stressed. You're not as, you're not as unfocused. And that, to me, makes everything much easier. So, again, I hope that this video has been helpful. On the other side, you can see where we're at. And you can see now how everything's set. We've got the GX16 port covers and we've got the IEC ports. Uh, as far as IEC, auxiliary, and then uh, the other two auxiliary ports for uh, relays or whatever else he's going to connect. And you can see just how we work on this. And then what I'll do is I'll naturally continue the process wiring each subsection for subassembly until we go to final completion. So again, guys, if you have questions, require quotes or consultations, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me through my eDealer store, eDealer Direct. It's, uh, the link in the video will be in the beginning and at the end. Once again, I thank you all for support. Love you guys. Take care.